Commandment six, do a thorough job of vetting a prospective employee before hiring them. The best way to avoid problems with employees, legal problems with employees, is to pick employees who are less likely to be problem children. And one of the things that I'm going to do in this portion of the talk is describe people who potentially could be problem children, how to identify them, and hopefully how to avoid hiring them. A few examples of that. I'm going to give you three examples of potential problem children. Number one, someone who was terminated from his or her previous job. A termination doesn't need to be an automatic disqualifier. Okay? A lot of good people have been terminated from their job. So I think that if someone, if you find out someone has been terminated or they tell you why they've been terminated, I think you ask them why and see what their answer is and equally important, see how they answer it. Uh, do they come across as credible? Do they come across as if they were fired for a performance-based reason? Do they seem to have at least some level of remorse or regret? Uh, if they were terminated for a reason, maybe something like a layoff or, or restructuring, uh, can they explain that? Are they, do they appear to be searching for an answer? To me, that's as important as the reason they got fired. Now, if they were fired for theft or something really egregious, I probably would not hire that person no matter how honest they were in their answer. But certainly, if they're dishonest in their answer as to why they were terminated, that's a red flag. That's a prospective problem child. I probably would not hire them. Second type of potential problem child is a person who fudges his or her resume. Once again, I think it's fair to say many people fudge their resume, and that's a little bit different than saying that they've falsified. Fudging may be a mild level of falsification, but we're not talking about just making things out of thin air or really egregious misstatements of fact. But many people tend to spin. Maybe that's a nicer way to say spin their resumes. Same type of thing. If you see an inconsistency in the resume or you think there's been some fudging, ask them questions. And if they admit to the fudging and they can explain it, probably shouldn't be that big a deal for you. If, on the other hand, they get very defensive and they don't answer you honestly about the fudging or they deny it when you know that they have fudged, that's probably a good indicator that you don't want to hire this person. And finally, and I would say most importantly, you want to avoid hiring people who are defensive during the interview. And in order to learn that, you may have to ask a tough question or two. And I am not advocating asking uh, uh, outrageous or overly rude questions or doing anything to specifically antagonize uh, someone who's being interviewed. But there's nothing wrong with asking a tough question or two and seeing how the interviewee reacts. If they react very defensively and if they're very thin-skinned, that's probably someone you want to avoid. I don't care how well qualified they are because in my experience and many of my former clients tend to be people who I learn, much to my chagrin, are very thin-skinned people. Those are the types of people that generally speaking you want to avoid whether it's for the C-suite or for people who are working uh, answering phones. Let me give you a couple of hypotheticals to help explain uh, these concepts. Jane Johnson is applying to work as an in-house lawyer. The applicants who apply for this job are informed that it's strongly preferred they graduated, that they graduated in the top half of their law school class. Johnson has a fantastic interview and Kildrew recommends that she be hired. Her resume says that she graduated from U of H Law School in the top half of her class. But it turns out, upon some investigation, that she graduated in the top 52% of her class. So not quite top 50%, 52%. Hire or do not hire? I think given this situation, if you have an, and if she gives an honest answer when she's confronted with it, I think the clear answer is that you hire her. According to the hypothetical, she had a fantastic interview. She did fudge her resume, but if she is asked about it, and as long as she admits to it and doesn't try to get overly defensive, I think there's nothing wrong with hiring on that basis. Now, if you change it up a little bit and she was only in the top 60% of her class, I think that probably is a deal breaker. That's a little bit different. That's no longer really a fudge. I think that crosses over into the, the level of a willful misstatement. Go through another hypothetical. Sam Smith interviews for a job in the assembly line. During his interview, he is asked if he has ever uh, done drugs. And Mr. Smith says, he starts to fidget with his hair, and he says, well, uh, why is that relevant? I'm not going to work for you as a lawyer. And when uh, the interviewer says it's a standard question, the answer given by Smith is, well, I'm still not sure why it's relevant, but, but okay, the answer is no. You hire this person. 
I think this is a pretty clear no, and it has almost nothing to do with the fact that he almost certainly did do drugs. If he hadn't, he wouldn't have given an answer, almost certainly wouldn't have given this kind of a, a nervous answer where you have to basically pull it out of him like you were pulling teeth. So I think no matter what drug he did, even if it was something as simple as marijuana, I think his defensiveness and his lack of candor would disqualify him. Now, if we change it up a little bit, what if uh, Smith said, yes, I smoked marijuana back when I was 17 years old, but I haven't smoked anymore? And if you need me to, I'll take a drug test. Would that change your answer? I think clearly, yes. Uh, it's a fact that many people have smoked marijuana. He was 17 when he did it, and he offered to take a drug test. So given that, I would not have any objection to hiring someone like that. The key takeaways that I want you to have from this portion of the talk is that the easiest way to avoid termination mistakes, in other words, terminating someone for an illegal reason, is you don't want to hire problem children. Okay? Thorough vetting is key. No matter what the position is, whether it's for your CFO or for the person answering the phones, you need to avoid hiring a difficult employee. No matter how talented they are, it's not worth the problem of hiring someone who's going to get, either create problems in the workplace or create problems after they no longer work for you.